Hi YouTube, welcome to the Emporium Outdoors. My name is Michael and this is Esme. So in this video we're going to be doing some camping in a traditional canvas tent, the snow tracker, and we're going to be testing out some new food. So if that sounds like fun, then you're more than welcome to join us. So before we get started, I'd like to give you a quick update on the Can-Am Defender. This is a 2019 XT cab model. And I've had it now for about 18 months. And it really has performed as well as I hoped it would. We don't have a lot of snow right now, probably three to four inches. So I'm still running the tires. I do have the whole LT360 Apache track system, which I just haven't put on yet. So I'm looking forward to maybe having some snow where we can uh, get the tracks and actually go off and rip through some snow. That'd be kind of fun. Uh, the temperature today when I woke up is about minus 20 Celsius and the high is going to be around about minus 15 Celsius and tonight we'll probably go down to about minus 22 I think somewhere around there. So relatively mild for this time of year but it's going to be fun in the snow trekker with the nice hot tent stove and everything so we're very much looking forward to it. Just looking up at the sun you can actually see two sun dogs, which is awesome. I'll try and get a picture of that for you. So we're going to jump in the buggy and uh, head off down the trail. So I just wanted to include this little clip. So this is one of the reasons I bought the Can-Am and got rid of the Argo, is I'm pretty much cruising about twice the top speed of the Argo. So on this little section where I have to move from one part of the trail system to the other, I'm just cruising along at 70 kilometers an hour, which is the machine can go much faster than that, but that's a nice comfortable speed in these sorts of road conditions. So we're just checking out some side roads. Uh, this is a trail I haven't been down for quite a few years and it looks like they've just ploughed this all out and I kind of went down to the bottom it's the well side that they're maintaining but normally this is pretty closed in so I thought I'd check it out. It'd be a nice place to camp here. Fortunately the ground is kind of on a bit of a hill uh, but the reason I stopped is I'm gonna Drop that dead standing tree. Um, still having shoulder problems, so I want to get just the right type of tree that I don't have to split very much. And that looks just about the right size, so I'm going to take that down and deal with it, and uh, then we can get back to what we're heading off to. So. some wool. Ah! <laughs> 
So we're all done, got our wood all cut. I really do like carrying a chainsaw. I know lots of uh, other outdoors people prefer to cut by hand, but I suppose I could do if I had to, but a chainsaw just breaks up a monotonous task. I think it's actually worth the wait, even if you were pulling it on, on a polk. I think I'd probably still bring a chainsaw because it really is, uh, it saves so much time. You cut them, it's fine if there's two people maybe, one cut and one splitting, but when you're solo, the setup of camping actually takes so much energy in the cold. Wherever you can kind of save some energy is uh, well worth the effort. <sighs> this is a really nice spot. See any squirrels? Any squirrels? Where are they? Go see. Go see squirrels. It's actually a very dense part of the forest here. Yeah, this is just a little bit flatter. It'd be quite nice. So I think we're going to head down to uh, what I call the ranch. And I think you've seen it on a couple of videos previously. And uh, check out that area, see if anything new or changed. And then we'll start thinking about a camp spot. Uh, I do have one in mind. Haven't been there since last year. Um, but maybe drive through there, take a look too. What is it? Anyway. So quite a lot of people actually camp at this spot and uh, you see they've left their poles up. Not sure how I feel about that really, but it's a nice spot, but I always feel exposed here. That's why I never camp, actually camp here. Because you just got people coming in and you know, it doesn't really bother me, but I prefer to just be out of the way. People don't know where I am. This is a nice spot. You can see right across the, the fields there. Well, I guess what used to be fields when this was a cattle ranch. Okay, so we're gonna keep going. Um, we're not too far now from one of our possible campsites. I'm just gonna check up here. Uh, have camped there a couple of times, but maybe three, four years ago. So it'd be nice to see whether it's viable. I just don't wanna shovel too much snow. <laughs> So we're just stopping. We're about to cross uh, this open field. Snow looks like it's got a little bit deeper here. I don't particularly want to get stuck. So I think I'm just gonna take a run up and nail it, I think. Hopefully we'll make it all the way across. Actually wasn't that bad. And that's our little campground.
So I think we'll stay here. See, we used to come here quite a lot uh, till the incident with the welfare check by the the Rosas, and uh, just didn't feel the same since. So I haven't really been back for probably coming up to a year, I think, somewhere around there. So I'm going to back the machine up, get everything prepped, and uh, get things started. So what I really like about this tent above other types of tent is it's almost semi freestanding. So I've got it standing up now, it's supported under the poles, but I can lift that whole tent and move it around to wherever I want to. Uh, some of the other tents I see people using, uh, the Aska for instance, uh, that looks like such a pain to put up. And that's why when I consider buying the Snow Trekker, I I kind of ruled it out pretty early on. Uh, also the high peak on that particular tent may look nice and all the rest of it but that's all the heat is going up to the top there and then staking out the sides as well. I'd much prefer to have this type of tent where it's you have everything with you. I'm not scouting around looking for a straight piece of wood or whatever. Uh, and I can pick it up and move it to relocate to a different site just to get it exactly. So I think the setup is a lot easier and quicker. But especially when it's very cold, it's nice just to be able to know how long it's going to take you to set up a tent. So just, uh, that's my opinion. That's why I chose the Snow Trekker over alternative tents. Okay, now we've got to put in the uh, side poles to pull it out. This one is the short wall. So you'll see the sides pop out from here and it gives you that extra piece of room. This is a 8 by 10 so it's 10 feet long and 8 feet wide. And you go inside is so you see the tents all set up I haven't put any furniture or anything like that yet I thought I'd give you a look inside so you can see what sort of space we have so I normally put my bed across the back 
which is fine and you can also get another cot along this edge the stove goes in this corner because of the stove jack obviously and you can stand up quite easily or at least I can for these two big tube vents one on either side which can be sealed in bad weather I just leave them open That's me. should you get your bed set up so what I'll do as well is once I start getting things in I'll actually come outside and once this thing starts to release on the creases I'll just give those lines a bit of a tug may drop a couple more stones on this side since there's no snow typically you would bury these skirts in snow and that'll freeze uh, I think I've had this tent for I want to say three years two or three years and it, it really is a pleasure to use I like it very much it's not as convenient as the Cabela's ice fishing tent but just to be under canvas and just how light it is inside and you know it's just such a beautiful tent to uh, to camp in and the setup takes a little bit longer but it's worth it So this is the Thermarest uh, down pillow. I'm not sure exactly what the name of this is, but I found I insert my climate pillow. Label pillow behind it makes a really good pillow and it packs up pretty small too one thing of, as I've got older is uh, sleeping with a pillow is pretty much a must yeah, clumpies
So we've just got the power fist stove fans. You may have seen these on my last trip. I think they're going to be much better in this tent because it's larger. They're already spinning up pretty good. Yeah, it's blowing out a nice warm air. Oh. Let's be comfortable in a little spot. Oh, I think I'm gonna have to take some layers off. So tonight we have a new piece of equipment to test out. So this is the Olight M2R Warrior. Uh, very much looking forward to testing out this flashlight. Love the pouch. It's gonna be one of the nicest pouches I've seen. It has the loop so you can get it over your belt. Also a solid loop so you put that on your duty belt uh, d-ring that you can hook it on and then simple opening so this is a, a professional flashlight so there are some unique parts to this uh, it's very good for defensive purposes has these serrations i think called crenellations around the outside so you can use it as a uh, bulky weapon if need be um, has tail switch which can be connected to a pressure switch using it on some sort of printing tool and also has this button on the front too so you can turn it on and off obviously the way I've actually got it set up you can change the way these modes work on the back I've got it set so a half press gets me full power so I can scout around and then a full press will give me the strobe so if I do get into a position where I need to scare something away or um, just draw attention to myself then uh, you can obviously signal and then the double press or the deep press gets the strobe so I really like the feel of it so far um, feels really nice pretty solid a little bit small if I'm honest for a defensive weapon uh, it should be a little bit bigger um, but it's easy to carry around if it's small so you can see the case is really nice I actually spent some money on putting this together because it is quite good quality let's get a bit of close-up on that Yeah, I'll put all the stats up so you can see all the lengths of light and all the rest of it. I think it's 1800 lumens. And uh, yeah, I like it a lot. Oh, so we're all set up in the tent. And uh, it's nice and warm. Uh, the temperature outside is about minus 5 Celsius. So it's quite a big difference from earlier this morning where it was minus 20 when I left. Uh, the sky is clear, so I'm expecting the temperature to drop, or it's forecast to drop to about minus 20 tonight. I'm sure she did that on purpose. <laughs> um, but a little story for you. Um, probably about two years ago, I uh, did a video, it's like mi minus 40 camping. It's actually in, in this snow tracker with this stove. And... Um, yeah, that, that video didn't go quite as planned. So you can't tell by the the video itself, um, but that was pretty close for me and Esme. Um, we could have got ourselves into a bit of a mess. Um, it was much colder than I'd expected. I think it, the actual temperature in that morning was, I think it was minus 44 Celsius. It was something like that, it was crazy. It was super cold. The tent was warm enough. It was about freezing. So we were fine inside the tent, but packing up the tent was just brutal. It was very difficult. Um, I had uh, my L.L. Bean boots on at the time, and we snowshoed in uh, with a polk 
Um, and it was hard going. I put my boots on. My feet were cold to start with. Uh, I put my boots on. They didn't warm up. They just froze. And uh, I put on my snowshoes. I, I must have tightened them too tight. And I couldn't feel it because my feet were numb. Uh, but I knew I had to get out pretty quickly. I didn't have the, the luxury of being able to stand around for too long. So we had to get moving. Anyway, we, we got out all the way to the truck. Thankfully, the truck started and we got in and my feet remained frozen the whole journey home. I took my boots off and you know tried to massage my feet, but it was, they were just, there was no feeling in them whatsoever. So anyway, got home, um, warmed up, noticed my parts of my feet had no sensation in them at all. On the outside of my feet, so my little toe and that strip of flesh down the side of each foot uh, completely no feeling I, and I lost that feeling for probably about three months before I could feel that part of my foot again um, so we were pretty close we were sailing too too close to the to the sun on that that trip and I think that was I've always tried to push myself and find my limits just not just in YouTube and camping but just in life um, I think it's part of the, the military doctrine um, where they they push you and push you they show you where your limits are what you can what you're not capable of doing um, and that's very important so you can gauge how to deal with things in life especially if you're a soldier or you're in the military uh, you need to know what you can achieve what's achievable and where people start to break down and fail so I've done the same thing in life. I've always kind of pushed forward to see how far I could go. And I pushed too far on that one. I made it out okay. No last in effects. But I'll never do a minus 40 camp solo again. Like that. That was... Uh, I could have fallen over in the snow. I could have had a problem getting up. I could have broken an ankle. And it would have been not not great um i would ha had to go into a survival situation like climbing in the sleeping bag just burying ourselves in the snow just to uh keep warm and try and figure some way of getting out so it wasn't good for me or esme uh she was very upset it was very cold um but i thought i'd give you a little bit of background it's um minus 40 is no joke actually i the 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 danger zone for me is below minus 25. I think once you get to that sort of temperature, um, the cold is so bad that if you have ungloved hands, you can you can use them for brief periods of time, but the the cold just bites, and it's it's hard to uh, describe. But your hands, as soon as you take them out, you can feel the cold biting uh, it's very painful so yeah it's, that's hard to uh, deal with that sort of temperature and then once you get down to minus 30 minus 35 then you've really got to be careful with your cheeks um, that they will freeze pretty quickly the water in your eyes will freeze uh, so things just start to behave oddly and then below minus 40 then things like plastics become extremely brittle. Uh, things just stop working. It's very uh, hard on machinery. So, yeah. I'll share that little story with you. So lots of people ask how we look after Esme's feet because obviously she doesn't wear shoes, dog boots, um, when it's cold and snowy. So we actually use this and it's called Mush's Wax and it's just a, uh, a wax that you can rub on her feet. I normally do it a couple of times. It smells nice, it's like a 
menthol, maybe something like that. Um, but as for his feet, he's getting a bit of snow. Her legs are odd. They're, they're not like regular dogs because they're very short. So they're very stocky, almost like a beagle. Um, she has very thick joints. Uh, so the, the boots aren't actually work very well. So what I'll do is just grab some of this. And just wipe it on her feet. What it does is it gives her pads a bit of a waterproof layer so the ice doesn't stick. Uh, but she probably needs a, she's due for a grooming session where they'll cut all this fur from beneath her pads. Yeah, so that's all we use on Esme's feet. Um, I've used about a quarter of this over the last year, I guess. So uh, it seems to last a long time. It can be used for silent fires, because it's obviously a wax. Or you can smear it over knives and, uh, you know, whatever type of stuff you have out in the cold that might rust. So it's a protective layer too. There you go. What I did is I pre-mixed my bannock um, flour, baking powder and salt I think it is. Um, so I'm going to mix this with some water and get that ready and hopefully by then the bacon will be, uh, be done. So the bacon fat in the bottom of the pan is going to be my oil for the bannock.
So we'll let that cook for a little while. Need to get this uh, temperature a bit higher, I think. I'm just going to pop the lid on. So we'll give that probably uh, 20, 30 minutes and I'll check back with you once it's cooked a bit more. Kind of hard to tell. Ugh. Yeah, I think that's done. Yeah, I think that's done. That is not bad. Hmm. Doesn't beat a steak or a nice piece of salmon, but with the bacon and the cheese, really good so I think I'm gonna finish up my bannock and maybe a little slice extra and uh, I'll give one to Esme and we'll get right back with you okay bon appetit okay it's time for us to hit the sleeping bag Esme's pretty tired so am I we had a very nice dinner with the bannock and the bacon and cheese and we've still got some left for breakfast, I think. I uh, have a book to listen to, so I can fall asleep to that. And, yeah. It's going to be a good night's sleep, I think. And I'll see you in the morning. Good night. So good morning everyone. We had a very pleasant night last night. Um, I managed to stay up and stack wood every two to three hours so the tent didn't get too cold. Temperature now is probably between minus 15 and minus 20. 
I don't have a thermometer right now. Uh, but it was a pretty easy night. We went through most of our wood. We've got a few bits left. And I'm about to put the coffee on. Esme likes coffee. Okay. Good job, Esme. So we've got the omelette, got the coffee. I think we're all set for a new day. Well, that says essentially packed up, ready to go. Uh, it's kind of a crisp morning, but it wasn't too bad. I think it took about 20 minutes to pack up slowly. But we're looking forward to the drive back. And I guess until next time, take care. Come on, guys. And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you like my videos, leave me a comment, maybe a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe.